where she cares about people. And it's just gonna be okay. I need to know that I have done one thing right with my life. The Whale was a drama, A24 drama, directed by Darren Aronofsky and stars Brendan Fraser, Sadie Sink, Han Chow, Samantha Morton, and Ty Sickens. This was premise. In the town of Idaho, Charlie is a reclusive and unhealthy English teacher, hides out in his flat apartments, and basically he's eating his way to death. So with only a week to live before he dies, he is desperate to reconnect with his teenage daughter for one last chance at redemption. This is this was not an easy watch. And when it comes to Darren Aronofsky, this is a director. He has a very interesting track record. Now, I don't love everything Darren Aronofsky does, but he does put effort into what he's trying to do. I haven't seen The Fountain and such, but one thing you do have to give him credit for is he is ambitious. He does know what he's going to do, and he does go for what he is going for. So this movie is fantastic. This is an emotionally and devastating, but very unflinching at times and very hard to watch at times. Heavy look on obesity, loss, isolation, redemption, and obsession. And this was one of my favorite movies of last year. Going to the positives, Darren Aronofsky shines a light with a great character studies for these characters. Mainly with Charlie, of course. You're dealing with themes of obsession, self-redemption, isolation. What those three effects can take a toll on you. And having messages about focusing on yourself before having to focus on somewhere else. Like, you have to deal with you as a flawed person right before, have, before you can help someone else. And I thought that really did help into the way I was looking at this movie. And also, giving people a second chance when they're at their most vulnerable. And... For some people, they can be pretty exhausted with this. And I have seen some people not like the movie for those reasons or being in one location. Because this is a movie that takes place in one location. And it just goes and it just one location setting. You do feel the dread. You do feel the anxiety. You do feel the loneliness of the main character of Charlie, which I'll get into the performance. But through Darren Aronofsky's direction and through the great cinematography and the way this movie is framed and the script by Sam D. Hunter, who also wrote the play on this, this is a well-written movie for the most part. I took a lot away from this, watching this back in December. Direction and cinematography-wise and, of course, Script-wise, all of that is very strong here. But the thing that really has elevates this movie is definitely Brendan Fraser, which he is not only on a career resurgence with this and stuff like Doom Patrol and such, but his performance definitely deserved the Oscar nomination. And you can tell Brendan Fraser put his all into this. He not only had to put on weight and process for this role, but he did have to take himself into a pretty dark place when it comes to his role. And Brendan Fraser is one of those underrated actors I always liked. I loved him in the Mummy trilogy, Bedazzled, Monkey Bone, um, Journey to the Center of the Earth, Georgia the Jungle, Encino Man. There's still quite a few Brendan Fraser movies I still need to see. But the man is a very great actor, and he, with his Oscar at his belt, he can finally show that he can can do performances like this. He does have moments of humor in this movie, but 
for a role like this, where he has to not only put on that much weight and put on prosthetics, because he's basically playing a overbearing 600-pound man, but he also has to do research and how to move like an obese person. And he was fantastic. It was either him or Austin Butler, but I said to myself while watching the Oscars back in March, He's, he was going to win, and I was right. Well-deserved win on his part. His performance in this movie is emotionally heartbreaking, devastating, and vulnerable. You even have to see him, because this is a man, like I said, he's basically eating himself to death, but also not wanting to get the help he needs. He's also an English teacher. He's trying to rekindle his relationship with his daughter, but... He was great in the movie. His performance is heartbreaking at times, very funny at times with some moments of funny, and just reminds us all as to why Brendan Fraser is a great actor. He's always been a great actor, and I'm glad that people are starting to see the talent that he is because he is definitely a fantastic actor, and he nailed it in this movie. He was great. Frazier, there is one scene in this movie involving him and the wife, played by Samantha Morton, which she was good in her one little scene there, where he basically just breaks down. And if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. But that one line of dialogue, when he's basically crying and he's basically saying that line of dialogue, I felt that. He's very good. That scene is probably my favorite moment of the entire movie. When he says, I need to know that I have done one thing right in my entire life. That just, it was heartbreaking to hear that. Supporting cast here. You have Hong Chao as Liz, where she got a best supporting actress. I loved her in the menu last year, and she it was very good here, being an emotional anchor and emotional support. And she also has something to do with the character of Charlie. I'm not going to spoil it in case you haven't seen it, but with the emotional story and character weight that she has, there's even some moments with her where she's crying, but she has some very lighthearted moments to her, and I thought she was fantastic. And the rapport that she has with Charlie, trying to get him the help he needs, getting him his meals, making sure that he's taken care of, making sure that he's okay in the last few weeks, few days of his life. He's just Her performance was fantastic, and I thought she really anchored this movie up to the emotional vulnerability that is desperately need, needed with some lightheartedness to her role. And she brings a lot of warmth into it. Second standout of this movie, next to Brendan Fraser, is going to be Sadie Sink as Ellie, who she has to play a very tricky role, which anyone who knows me knows I am a fan of Sadie Sink. I have been ever since Stranger Things. Her character in this movie has to play a very tricky role in the character of Ellie. She shows a lot of anger and a lot of hate and a lot of resentment. But there are a few moments here, especially towards the end, where she does want to try to help her dad. She does have an emotional scene towards the end with her and Brendan Fraser, where she's begging him to get help. But Sadie Sink is a great rising actress that she pulls off the wall very well. And she was great. Too. She's basically a younger version of Julianne Moore, if you will. And Say Sink already proved that she is a great actress. The other aspects, such as the editing of, editing of this movie, this movie is 117 minutes, didn't feel like it. It was well edited, it was tightly paced. Aside from one scene in the beginning, I could have done without. The score by Rob Zamunson is very good. It does a good job at making you feel the emotional weight, but... It also puts you into Charlie's shoes where you're basically watching a man eat himself to death. And I, like I said, some of these moments in this movie are not easy for the faint of heart to watch, especially if you're someone who is obese, who is dealing with food problems, 
who is dealing with problems of her own. And so, for some people, this could easily make you mad. And I have seen a lot of controversy when it comes to this movie. Like, this movie is kind of embarrassing and fat shaming. I don't really see it that way as a fat shaming movie. Things that does bring this movie down is while these are two good performances and Ty Simpkins as the one character who basically lies and he ends up getting his little redemption story at the end. And Samantha Morton does a good job as the mom character of Ellie. I felt like they were kind of just there because the movie needed them to be there. They're not bad performances by any means necessary. I just felt like they were just kind of there and they could have done a little bit more. They're not bad performances, though. I do think they do give very strong, capable performances into the movie. Besides the mother characters, there is one scene in this movie that in the beginning, I know this is sort of a thing that people deal with personally, but this is the one moment you could easily cut out. Now, you understand when it comes to Charlie's dealing with his sexuality and such and such, but that wasn't really needed. Okay, that wasn't really needed to there. It was kind of just there. Because the movie say it has to be there. The ending, of course, I didn't have a problem with. But my final negative when it comes to this movie is, while I love the performance of Sadie Sink, I thought she did a great job as Ellie. Ellie is a bit one note here. And she, at this point, she becomes very unlikable and annoying at times, doing a lot of things that she does. Calling out her mom, no, no, calling out her dad, basically fat shaming him, putting him down, basically doing the worst things possible here. It kind of goes into that straight up villain territory. Now, I totally understand a part of why Ellie is acting the way she is. I'm sorry, this was just une unethical to watch in the points, and it was became a little bit unbearable with her being very angry and resentment all the time. And I wish there was more moments of her that we could have saw were giving her dad credit for the stuff that she had he has done in her life. I wanted to see the other side of Ellie where she was happy. What were their happy moments? What were the moments of them before things went pretty hard? But despite that, the redemption for her character did kick in in the last couple minutes. And I was able to turn around to her. Could have used a little bit more run time for that. But all of that could have been done a little bit better. There. But all in all, The Whale, I thought, was one of the best movies of last year. I can't wait to talk about this a little bit more in my best 2022 thing I got coming. This movie is a heartbreaking, unflinching, very emotionally devastating, but emotional look at isolation, obsession with obesity and food, self-redemption and regret and remorse, thanks to Darren Aronofsky's direction, but also anchored very well by strong performances by Brendan Fraser, Sadie Sink, and Hong Chow. This is not going to be a movie for everyone, especially with the subject matter and the fact that this is an A24 movie. So know who you are going into this. Because I'm telling you right now, don't come crying to me talking about this movie was too emotionally devastating for me. Because this is an emotionally heavy film. If you've seen the trailers, if you've seen any clips from this movie. But I will... I would definitely recommend this for a one to watch if you want to see how Brendan Fraser got his Oscar win. So, definitely, I'm going to go ahead and give this one a better than Vampire Academy. It's almost close to being a Spider-Verse seal of approval, but just a few issues does let it down a little bit. Sure, when I watch this again, when I have the patience to... 
I can definitely take a lot more away from it. Well, that's going to do it for the video that you just watched. I will have my channel here, so you will like to see anything here. Click the channel icon, subscribe for more. I will also leave a video and maybe a playlist here, so in case you want to see what I'm about. As always, stay up assassinist, join the assassinist, and you guys, keep it cool.